Hey, what's up guys, Mikey here. I feel like I really need to be a part of a group, but no matter how hard I try, I just don't fit in anywhere. But then I realized I was one of the 7.93 million people who watched episode 122, Have You Seen This Snail, live on the day it premiered in 2005. Too bad that cult died in 2006. Ratings, the best way to know your TV show is doing well. Views are vital to a TV show's success and one of the most important things that contribute to how well a show does. It's possible for a show to get millions of views on the day it premieres, but it's also likely for a Spongebob episode to get less than a quarter million views on the day it premieres. It was bound to happen eventually. Yeah, these days with cable dying, less and less people are seeing new episodes on the day they come out, and that's apparent when Spongebob of all shows have these kinds of views with every new episode coming out in the 2020s. There's many reasons as to why this is the case, but that's not today's story. No, no, no. Today we're going to reflect on the top 10 most viewed episodes of the series and discuss why so many people viewed them on premiere day. Now keep this in mind, the only rules I have in this case is, since some days have two or more individual episodes premiering on the same day, then those two or more episodes will be included in the same spot if they crack the list. And this only applies to the initial premiere dates, no reruns. The first episode on our list today is episode 189, Pest of the West from season 5, coming in at 6.14 million views. This episode premiered on April 11, 2008 and came right after a marathon called Pest of the West Showdown. This episode explores Spongebob's family history, where Spongebob learns about his ancestor named Spongebuck Squarepants. He became famous after saving the town of Deadeye Gulch from Deadeye Plankton. This episode follows the classic cartoon tradition where a character's ancestors are basically the same as their modern day versions, just with different clothes and sometimes different accents. There's also a couple songs in this episode, one where the citizens of Deadeye Gulch sing about Deadeye Plankton, and another at the very end where Sponge Buck and Pecos Patrick sing about Idiot Friends. The latter of the two songs ended up being popular enough to make it onto the SpongeBob's Greatest Hits CD in 2009. But other than that, there isn't anything super memorable about this episode. This was advertised so heavily about Spongebob's ancestry, and it aired after a marathon called Pest of the West Showdown Marathon, where the viewers can vote on what episodes they want to see before the special. I never understood that since the theme of the marathon doesn't relate to what the episode's about. But aside from that, there didn't feel like there was enough of a story for this to actually be 22 minutes long. There was a large buildup of Spongebuck and Deadeye showdown, and it was very anticlimactic as Spongebuck saved the day by just stepping on him. Aside from a few funny jokes and the concept itself being interesting, there wasn't a whole lot that lived up to the hype of how Nickelodeon advertised it. And don't you worry, this won't be the last time you'll hear me say that. Like any human being, I love going to parties, and Spongebob fulfills that desire too. The next episode is episode 101, Party Pooper Pants from season 3, coming in at 6.32 million viewers. This episode is about Spongebob throwing a house party. There's also a Patchy the Pirate segment where Patchy throws a house party too. This episode aired on May 17, 2002, and there was also a marathon leading up to this episode. But I was only 4 years old at the time this episode came out, so I don't know much about the marketing for this episode. The Patchy segments feature special musical guest Lux Interior performing a song called Underwater Sun at the end. This episode is one of the few controversial episodes of seasons 1, 2, and 3. The whole episode could have sufficed as an 11 minute episode, but it seems forced into a 22 minute episode with so many jokes elongated for seemingly no reason and extremely long patchy segments. The patchy segments here are even longer than something like episode 56, Christmas Who from season 2, where they felt like an appropriate length for how long they should be. This episode is also disliked because Spongebob is a jerk as he was actively trying to stop his guests from having fun and trying to stick to his schedule of boring as hell as like reading from the newspaper comics. When he gets locked out, he gets arrested for not inviting the cops to his party, and his mad only appears at the very end when he returns to his house. All of this is just infuriating, and there's nothing special about the Spongebob segments. I'd argue the best part of the whole episode was the musical number at the end, but that's from the patchy segments. So despite this episode being super hyped up, even I would only attend this party if Spongebob wasn't there. Now here is something interesting. 
Episode 273, Trench Billies from Season 7, premiered on January 29, 2011 to a total of 6.55 million views. This is one of the only 11-minute episodes on this list. This episode was from a miniseries called Legends of Bikini Bottom that featured episodes that all had a theme of creatures or locations that sounds like urban legends or something absolutely bizarre to encounter. These episodes released on DVD in November 2010 before they aired on TV. This episode in particular is about Spongebob and Patrick being held captive by a group of anglerfish that are just your typical hillbillies, which of course is just so annoying. This episode features an on-screen death, but other than that, there is like nothing memorable about this episode. This felt like one of, if not the most worthless episode of this miniseries. Oh, and also, Mr. Krabs gets hitched to the leader of the clan at the very end, and it's never mentioned again, so... why? Side note, but this episode, in episode 271, The Curse of the Hex, aired on different days to the rest of this miniseries, and I never understood why they didn't air all the episodes on the same day, or even tried doing a week of new episodes to premiere these. While this is one of the worst episodes of the miniseries, I'm surprised that this has the most views of all of those episodes. Finally, something better. Episode 154, Best Day Ever from Season 4, premiered on November 10th, 2006 to a total of 6.65 million viewers. This is the most viewed 11-minute episode on this list. This episode was based on a song from the Spongebob Squarepants movie called The Best Day Ever. It was the final song that played during the end credits. This had a 24-hour marathon called The Best Day Ever Marathon, which was about the top 100 episodes that fans voted for online, and Patchy the Pirate counted down these episodes in the build-up to this episode. But when this episode premiered, I remember thinking it went by so fast for some reason, and even an old friend of mine thought the same thing. The song is of course great, but I felt like this episode was rather on the average side. There are a lot of good things about this episode, like how Spongebob helps all his friends and they all thank him for his good deeds and show their gratitude by putting on the show, but this episode was advertised in such a wrong way that made this feel anticlimactic. With the marathon, it sounds like it's going to be a special episode, but it's not special by any means. While it's a fine episode, this definitely didn't live up to the hype as it was advertised. Something about this feels like it was almost advertised as a series finale, which leads us to this. Episode 115, The Sponge Who Could Fly from Season 3, aired on March 21st, 2003 to a total of 7.64 million viewers. This episode is always referred to as the Lost Spongebob episode. Patchy the Pirate appears and says he lost the Lost episode, and we have this Remembering Spongebob montage. This would be appropriate for a series finale, and even though Season 3 was intended to be the final season originally, this wasn't even the final episode of Season 3. Then there's the plot of the Spongebob portion, where Spongebob wants to fly with the jellyfish and suffers several problems along the way. People make fun of him and try to attack him for fulfilling his dreams, and when Spongebob finally has his chance to make his dreams a reality, everybody makes him do favors for them, despite the fact that they were trying to attack him earlier in the episode. Almost all the other characters are absolute assholes in this episode, and sometimes I just can't stand them. While Spongebob gets to fly with the jellyfish like he wanted, I just feel like the townsfolk should have left him alone. The patchy segments were kind of interesting, and I liked the songs, but this was advertised as a lost episode? Again, I was too young to watch the marathons leading up to this episode, so cut me some slack. Moving on to the top 5, the next episode is episode 240, Truth or Square from season 6, which premiered on November 6, 2009 to a total of 7.66 million views. This episode was a TV movie to celebrate the show's 10th anniversary. The Spongebob segment focuses on the Krusty Krab's 117th anniversary, but the characters get trapped in the freezer right before the celebration. The Patchy segments are about Patchy throwing a TV special for the anniversary, and tries to get random celebrities as well as Spongebob himself for the special. Nothing goes well for him, and Patchy is upset about never getting to meet Spongebob. The advertising for this episode mostly talked about the biggest secrets of the whole series finally being revealed, like a marriage between Spongebob and Sandy, how Spongebob's pineapple was underwater, Spongebob's first Krabby Patty, and the secret formula finally being revealed. While some of these things did happen, the episode ended up not being very good for a celebration of the show's 10th anniversary. Nothing interesting happened, the patchy segments really drag on, and most of the flashbacks are very misleading. 
Without the patchy segments, this literally would have been a 22 minute episode. I'm really starting to get tired of all these episodes feeling like they were actively dragged on like this. This is the only season 6 episode on this list, so now let's take a step back to season 5. The next episode is episode 192, Whatever Happened to Spongebob from season 5. This episode premiered on October 13, 2008 to a total of 7.67 million views. This episode didn't have Patchy the Pirate either, aside from whatever this is at the beginning. This episode is where Spongebob pisses everybody off, so he runs away and gets amnesia. He ends up as the mayor of New Kelp City, and the others try to get him back. This episode was advertised as Who Bob What Pants and even had an alternate theme song at the start. This episode is very mean spirited. Everybody is so mean to Spongebob at the beginning and even when he moves away, the people of the other town are mean to him when he blows bubbles at first. This is of course because of this bad boy gang called the Bubble Poppin' Boys who hates bubbles, but he then gets rid of them and becomes mayor. This episode is very bland, but I will say at least more of the advertising here made sense compared to some of the other advertising we talked about. Now even though Spongebob ran away here, we need another character to run away this time. Episode 122, Have You Seen This Snail from Season 4 premiered on November 11, 2005 to a total of 7.93 million views. This was the first 22 minute episode that came out after the Spongebob Squarepants movie and this was hyped up to be another big thing. The plot of this is that Spongebob doesn't feed Gary because he's too distracted with a paddle ball challenge and Gary runs away as a result. And when Spongebob realizes this, he sets out to find Gary. And I will say, despite the fact that the marketing went overboard as usual, this episode is definitely more deserving of the high view count. This episode does have some funny moments and is quite impactful all around. There is a song that made people cry when this episode came out. It's a beautiful piece, and the episode as a whole accomplishes what it's set out to do. Patrick has a lot of great lines here, and you also feel bad for Spongebob being a neglectful pet owner. He does learn the errors of his ways and makes up for all his mistakes, and the ending is so heartfelt. I feel this episode is underrated, and I think it deserves more recognition. You might be saying, well this is great Mikey, I like Spongebob songs and all, but there was only one song in this episode and it was too sad. I want more songs that aren't sad. That's exactly why this next episode was made. Episode 127, Dunces and Dragons from Season 4, premiered on February 20th, 2006 to a total of 8.56 million viewers. This episode was advertised as Lost in Time because the plot is Spongebob and Patrick going back to the Middle Ages after a jousting accident. The town is under attack by a dragon jellyfish sent by wizard Planktonomore, and Spongebob and Patrick have to defeat it. This episode is absolutely one of the best episodes of the whole series. The theme is amazing, the plot is unique, the setting and art style are both just superb, the medieval versions of all the other characters are awesome, and we get seven great songs sung by Squidly. Oh, thank f I'd argue this is the best episode we talked about on this list so far in terms of its quality, and it deserves the views it's gotten. And moving on to the most viewed episode of the series, that is episode 181, Atlantis Square Panis from season 5, which aired on November 12, 2007 to a total of 8.76 million views. Or 9.22 million if you count this live plus 7 thing. This was the show's first TV movie and of course the marketing went hard. There was a Spongebob Z to A marathon that featured episodes that started with those letters leading up to this episode at the very end. This episode features a lot of songs, but most of the songs felt like the characters just talking regularly with music playing to them. This episode also features special guest star David Bowie as Lord Royal Highness. This episode was supposed to be just 11 minutes long, but Nickelodeon basically forced it into a movie for marketing reasons. I feel maybe with a shorter patchy segment, this could have possibly worked as a 22 minute episode, but there just wasn't enough material for this to be a TV movie. This felt so boring and anything remotely interesting took way too long to happen, and it doesn't last long at all. And of course, the patchy segments drag on for way too long. I do have a lot of nostalgia for this episode, but looking back at it in retrospect, 
it's not too great, and as the most viewed episode of the whole series, it just didn't live up to the hype. Okay, so what did we learn from this list? Well, most of these episodes aired after a TV marathon, and the marketing was absolutely obnoxious and misleading at times. But I will admit, at least there was actual advertising for these episodes, which is crucial to how all these episodes got the amount of views they got in the first place. Regardless of how good or bad they turned out to be, the marketing still worked well because it made lots of people tune in, even if the episodes didn't live up to the hype. And if they did live up to the hype, that was a proud moment for Spongebob fans, especially those who watched the episodes live as they came out. But since that group I was a part of back in 2005 is broken up now, I need to find another group to be a part of. <sighs> well, I do own this, so I'm probably part of some kind of group. A group that likes pain. <laughs>